What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So on stage at their September keynote event, Apple announced two new iPhones, the colorful iPhone 11, which replaces last year's iPhone 10R, and the iPhone 11 Pro, which replaces the 10S. And this is the new iPhone 11 Pro. Actually, it's the larger 11 Pro Max, and it's the biggest and most expensive iPhone in the lineup this year. Obviously, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and unbox it, and I'm also gonna go over all of the new features and changes that this phone has to offer. So enough talking, let's go ahead Ahead and get right into it. Apple's unboxing experience with the iPhone has remained pretty much the same over the years, and they kept things very familiar with the iPhone 11 Pro this time around too. The all black box has some midnight green accents that match the new midnight green phone inside, and pulling off the lid, we're immediately greeted by the phone itself. We'll go ahead and peel back that protective plastic layer on the front and power the phone on. And while it's booting up, let's go ahead and take a look at everything else that comes inside the box because there are a few important things to talk about. First up, of course, we have that famous design by Apple and California text on the outside of a little packet, which holds the instructions and some product information, as well as the usual Apple stickers and a SIM ejector tool. Digging a little deeper inside the box, you'll notice that we finally get an upgraded wall adapter included with the iPhone 11 Pro. This is an 18 watt USB-C fast charging wall plug, and after years of the same tiny 5 watt charger, Apple finally gave in and gave the iPhone the charger it deserves. Paired with a new lightning to USB-C cable that's also included, you should be able to charge up the iPhone 11 Pro to 50% in 30 minutes or less. Now, by the way, while the fast charging wall adapter is included with the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, the cheaper, regular iPhone 11 11, the colorful one, did not get this new charger included in the box, which is a real shame. And the only other thing included inside the package here is the regular old wired lightning ear pods. So here is the new iPhone 11 Pro Max. And like I mentioned earlier, this phone is the new midnight green color. This is the first time Apple has ever had a color like this on any of their products. And I have to say, at first I was kind of skeptical about this color, but in person, I think it looks really good. Good. It's kind of like a soft army green, and the color of the actual phone is darker and has more of a blue tint to it than the green that's shown on the box and even on Apple's website. So I'd recommend going down to the Apple store and seeing this phone in person if you have the chance to really make sure you do like the color. In addition to midnight green, the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max come in the other standard array of Apple's colors, including space gray, silver, and gold. As far as their pricing, you'll definitely be paying quite a bit for these new phones. The smaller 5.8 inch iPhone 11 Pro starts at $999 for 64 gigabytes, and the larger 6.5 inch Pro Max starts at $1099, with each phone going up in price the more gigabytes you want. Now, aside from this phone being green, Physically, not a whole lot has changed from last year's 10s and 10s Max. The design and dimensions and form factor are all nearly identical. So if you're familiar with last year's devices, you'll feel very comfortable with the 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max in your hand. But there are a couple of things worth noting in regards to the design and materials. First off, obviously this year's iPhones have this new frosted back glass. On camera, it almost sort of looks like a brushed aluminum, but it is in fact glass and it's a really unique finish. The phone is so slippery now, but I do like the look and I think overall the device feels even more premium. Apple also says the glass is the strongest ever on a smartphone, and I'm hoping to not test that out anytime soon. I'm sure it'll still crack with a good drop, but props to Apple for trying to make these phones a bit stronger. Side by side with the regular iPhone 11, you can definitely see the difference. The purple iPhone 11 has a standard glass back, while the 11 Pro has that frosted glass, and interestingly enough, the camera area on these phones have the inverse glass finish glossy on the Pro and frosted on the regular 11. The edges on the 11 Pro are a color matched stainless steel, which again looks super premium. And in the hand, this phone feels noticeably heavier than last year's device, and that's because it is. At nearly eight ounces, this phone is more than half an ounce heavier than the 10s Max, 
and it's something you can definitely feel right away. It isn't uncomfortable or awkward by any means, but it's the heaviest iPhone Apple has ever made, and you certainly feel that when you hold this thing. The other very obvious design change, of course, has to do with that new triple camera setup around back, and since the cameras are what Apple is pushing most with this phone, let's talk about what we get here. The iPhone 11 Pro's triple camera setup includes a standard lens, a telephoto lens, and a brand new ultra-wide angle lens. In addition to some improvements to the internals, this camera setup offers even more features and capabilities than ever before. The wide-angle lens, of course, allows you to capture much more in a single shot, and you can even utilize the wide-angle lens for portrait pictures as well, which is pretty interesting. There's also a brand new night mode, which isn't new to phones, but it's certainly new to the iPhone. Now, when the iPhone detects a scene with less than ideal lighting conditions, a new option will appear on screen to utilize night mode to take a picture. You don't have to use night mode if you don't want to. You can tap to turn it on and off, but night mode does allow for a much better shot in low light, of course. And if you want a bit more control over your night mode pictures, you can even control the shutter speed depending on how dark the setting is. Personally, I'm super happy to see night mode come to the iPhone, and I'm really interested to compare how the iPhone does in its night mode versus the Note 10 and Google Pixel and some other devices. Devices. Of course, the phone itself is also going to take far better regular pictures and videos compared to last year, and again, I look forward to testing that out properly in a future video. Now, in addition to the rear cameras getting an upgrade, the front selfie camera is also new too. You now get a new 12 megapixel true depth camera that Apple says makes Face ID up to 30% faster, which is awesome. You should also be able to unlock the device from off angles, and this improved Face ID is another feature of the new iPhone that I'm really going to try and put to the test. The front camera also has some new software features, including slow motion selfies or slow fees, as Apple is trying to market them as. In addition to that, the front facing camera can also capture a bit wider of a shot, either by pressing on a new icon on screen or by simply just rotating the device into landscape. The default selfie view is that cropped view, but you can enable a sort of mock wide angle front selfie, which again is just a nice little addition. There's also 4K video recording at 60 FPS, improved HDR all around, a new portrait filter, quick take, which allows you to hold the shutter button down and take a video while still in picture mode, and an audio zoom feature too. And overall, the cameras both on the front and back, I think, are what Apple is calling the main selling feature of this new iPhone. The second big selling point for the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max is the battery life. Now, I already talked about how Apple did a good job and included the fast charger in the box like they should have, but they also made massive improvements to the battery life as well. The iPhone 11 Pro lasts up to four hours longer than last year's 10s, and the Pro Max lasts up to five hours longer than the 10s Max. Those are some ridiculous claims, and I think if those battery stats are true, we're looking at incredible longevity with these devices. One of the reasons for the greatly improved battery life is the fact that the batteries themselves inside the phones are quite a bit bigger. 3,046 milliamps on the iPhone 11 Pro and 3,969 milliamps on the Pro Max. Apple was able to jam those bigger batteries inside the phone by making the devices just a bit thicker and also officially abandoning 3D touch on the displays. Now, with the iPhone 11 Pro, you'll be using haptic touch to launch shortcuts and peak and pop, and coming from an iPhone XR last year that also lacked 3D touch, this is something I got used to. It's basically now just sort of a long press and hold, and it's a shame the feature is basically killed off but at the end of the day, I think it makes sense to do so. And speaking of the display, Apple did make some improvements here too. The screens on the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max are what Apple calls their Super Retina XDR OLED displays. The 6.5 inch Pro Max has a resolution of 2688 by 1242. And overall, the screen is brighter and more colorful than last year's. The XDR stands for Extreme Dynamic Range, which offers a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and up to 1200 nits of brightness. And technical specs aside, the display does look fantastic. It's bold, crisp, and colorful, and I think it's one of the best viewing experiences on a smartphone right now. In order to enjoy your content even more, Apple also made improvements to the dual external speakers on the new iPhones. You now have what Apple calls spatial audio with Dolby Atmos support, and honestly, I always felt that the iPhone had pretty good speakers to begin with, but now things should sound even better. And of course, inside these new iPhones are Apple 
Apple's latest and greatest processors. The Pro Max packs the new A13 Bionic chip and third generation neural engine for improved speed and performance, up to 20% faster than last year's phones. You also get 4 gigabytes of RAM, and paired with iOS 13, you're obviously going to get the fastest and smoothest iPhone out of the box. And by the way, iOS 13 is available for pretty much every iPhone from the last few years. If you haven't updated yet, you should see it available to you already on your device. And I have a separate video on my channel outlining all the new features in iOS 13 already if you are interested. Just a couple more things to mention here. The new iPhones do have slightly better water resistance. There's support for faster Wi-Fi and LTE, and a new one Ultra chip for improved spatial awareness and better indoor tracking. So there you go. That's pretty much everything new with the new iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max. If I happen to miss anything important, let me know down in the comments. And also let me know if you ended up getting a new iPhone or maybe if you're still deciding on one. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you think of these new iPhones in the comments down below. Of course, I'd love to know your thoughts. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.